Hello YouTube. So, I feel like this is some kind of middle ground between a rant and a ramble. Maybe more on ramble than rant. 70-30? Sure. So, I call this uh, lost consciousness and the perception of self and other as arbitrary. So, there have been times I kind of get absorbed in an experience. It can be almost anything. But the boundaries between me and what I'm immersed in seem to get soft. Not as strong. I had some far out idea thinking what if uh, consciousness was lost you know like it really truly is free it's not bounded by anything but it's got lost and it's confused into thinking that it's trapped in a bag of skin like Alan Watts would say and so you know, I'm having these immersive, imminent experiences, and I can feel what I normally identify with expand. And, you know, I can be looking at something, and I feel that I am that thing I'm looking at in some sense where maybe I can't control it, like I move my hand, but it could be something like my hair growing. I don't control that, but I consider that part of myself. And so I can see the thing that's happening outside of me as an extension of myself, although I may not be able to have any agency on it. Like, you know, I can move it around with my mind or something, but I can experience it. Like, I experience my hair growing, right? Or my nails growing or breathing when I'm not thinking about it too much. You know, all these things happen without me doing it. And when I'm looking around me, and I'm in these imminent, immersive experiences, the things that are happening around me are also happening as if they were a part of me. And so, I just feel like maybe pure, or in this case, uh, unadulterated, consciousness would be boundless and not centered on anything but the experience as a whole you know but what what happens to you know how, how does it get lost is that something we learn is that just normal biology that awareness can somehow escape or be channeled so the organism can you know, get its food and procreate and all that good stuff. I heard a Terrence McKenna talk the other day where he brought up the idea of different uh, psychedelic drugs as designer neurotransmitters or alternative neurotransmitters because if you look at most you know psychedelic drugs serotonogic serotonogic <laughs> this you know the, the psychedelic drugs that work on the serotonin system they all look just like serotonin so it's uh, easy to understand why they work on that part of the brain because the brain thinks that, hey, this is a neurotransmitter that works in this region, so let me move that over there. And so his idea was that it could be that each neurotransmitter, like serotonin, can be like a kind of lens, or a, he used the word, uh, I'm sorry, he used the analogy of a radio frequency, that each one tunes into a different part of reality and so normally 
their serotonin system is working on traffic and, we and weather. But he says when you when, when you uh, introduce these other compounds, like psilocybin, for instance, or dimethyltryptamine, you're um, tuning into a different radio station, and instead of, instead of getting traffic and weather, you're getting alien philosophy. Oh, I'm sorry, alien music and you know weird philosophy. I think he used the, uh, the example of Pacifica Radio. I've never heard Pacifica Radio, but I imagine it's not traffic and weather and probably something either trivial or uh, not practical at all. <clears throat> at least for on short time scales. So, seeing that maybe it has to do, the, the trapping of consciousness has to do with these neurotransmitters and whether or not in the same way that we introduce exterior things in the environment inside as nutrients it could be that psilocybin is another nutrient but not for the body um, but for the, the brain specifically just the brain as a an alternative neurotransmitter because it, it can kind of seem you know if you had a you know if you had traffic and weather playing all the time I mean it'd be great you would know if you can go outside but you're limited and you can see that being only on traffic and weather would you know stop you from experiencing other things that can make the traffic and weather reports more um, worthwhile for instance maybe tuning into another station you can learn about a new place to go when you go to traffic and weather so you go back to traffic and weather after experiencing some other station or going through another station and now you have a new idea about where to go and you can use the traffic and weather to take you that to that place that could be called bringing back the creativity and creating the thing which you had the inception of and uh, you know during the experience right whether it be like music or an actual patent, you know, like an engineering patent, um, patent uh, uh, a patent, you know, taking out one of those. It, it could be any of those things, you know. So, I find it to be really interesting that the, the consciousness, our consciousness, can become lost or trapped in this kind of arbitrary, um, in this bag of skin, and the things that happen outside this bag of skin are completely unrelated. And that is what the maybe the regular diet of uh, the serotonogic psychedelics can help alleviate. You know, in the sense that they tell us that we are not just inside this bag of skin, or at least allow us the experience of not being in just a bag of skin and I feel like it can it really can contribute to health um, I mean I didn't use the adjective lost for no reason I really think it's something negative that this consciousness is trapped within the boundary of the bag of skin and only the bag of skin I mean it's I think the bag of skin should be looked at instead of as a really hard a, a boundary or a distinction from the outside world, like almost like two colors or something, um, or two completely different substances. Instead, we can see that the limits of the body are like a traffic uh, intersection where things are continuously flowing in and out, right? So instead of it being like a Great Wall of China, we have like a street, four way, busy intersection where things are just coming in and out, exchanging places, and um, you know, running along roots and currents and loops and whatnot. So, what we see is just like the center of gravity. I mean, I've talked about this um, in my video about that. You, you know, you're not your brain, or you're not just your brain. That the brain is not the center, but just kind of like a hub. And we can see the body in the same way because you're into you know complete interaction with the environment. So. I mean, it, it makes per perfect sense because we all need food. And we usually don't see food as something external. We see it as something we kind of need. But when we see something in the environment that grows naturally, like mushrooms or cannabis, 
that create and allow these kinds of experiences. That can actually, uh, that, that's actually seen as exterior and it kind of fortifies this uh, idea that we are not just, we, we're just a bag of skin. When in fact, just in the same way we eat food and eat things from food and nutrients from food, we can use these uh, psycho uh, uh, pharmaceuticals or, or these uh, uh, designer neurotransmitters. I mean, you can't even call them designer because they're so old, just alternative neurotransmitters in order to uh, bring health into the normal system. You know, having experiences from time to time, feeling these ways. Uh, there's something really interesting in the tradition of hermeticism, especially in alchemy. For those of you who are not uh, familiar with this, hermeticism is just the uh, old mystical slash occult tradition in the Western world. So, uh, like uh, how there's mystical traditions in India, there are mystical traditions in the West and Europe during the Middle Ages and, and the Renaissance. And of these traditions, so they were called alchemy and, and hermeticism. And they had the idea, a specific idea I just want to mention that relates to this is that the uh, ego, right? The feeling of, of agency and being you, right? That normally would be inside the bag of skin. That this, if, it's, if it goes unchecked or uh, if never gets cleaned out once in a while, it can become kind of calcified. But they use it. They say the word calcified. So kind of thinking like, you know, you, you see, you know, if you don't clean your shower head over and over, there's kind of this crust that builds on it and becomes harder and, and in cases and, you know, and, and so they're saying like the ego, something like that. And then when we don't have these experiences of feeling outside the bag of skin, that ego, that feeling of being in the skin, analogize as this kind of, this, you know, growth that just doesn't, you know, that needs to be wiped off and cleaned because it kind of, just like a normal shower head, if you want it to run good, you need it to be unobstructed. So in order to add, to, to allow the flow of life to come through in a perfect way, you need that part to not be blocked up and clogged with this calcified ego, with this kind of static and you know, solid structure that obstructs the dynamic trajectory of life right? and this is why it's lost because it's trapped in that instead of being in the wider stream but you know but of course when, when, you, when you think about it it's always not going to be uh, you know it's, it's never truly lost in the sense that it's only an illusion that it's in this bag of skin, right? The consciousness is truly exteriorized. Uh, but instead, the, the feeling of lostness is not like it's a true condition, but it's something, it's an illusion, something we trick ourselves into believing, kind of like a lie. And so, this perception of self and other is truly arbitrary. That doesn't mean it's not practical, but it's arbitrary because you can have experiences where you're not in the bag of skin or that bag of skin, uh, the boundary of the bag of skin means very little to you, right? <clears throat> you know, kind of like Alan Watts' analogy. Instead of seeing yourself as uh, coming face to face with the earth and the environment as you're two, oppo like, like if you were two opposing forces, instead you can see yourself as growing out of the earth and the environment like an apple coming out of a tree. You know, you see the apple as part of the tree, although you can pluck it off and it has its own shape and dimension and it can be, you know, tell, can be told apart. It still came from the tree and it's a part of the tree. And so this is all about restructuring our relationship to the outside world. Uh, another good thinker that had this idea was uh, Martin Buber, uh, who was a... Uh, Jewish philosopher who talked about something called the I Tao versus uh, I Tao, and, and, and I'm sorry for a second. I just need to see. Uh, so yeah, it's I Tao, and 
I and Dao relationship. And it's uh, also I and it relationship, okay? So I was right. I thought it'd be a more complicated word than it, but it's actually just it. So uh, there's two kinds of relationships, a relationship you can have with the outside world, wh whether it be inanimate or animate, either an I-Dao relationship or an I-It relationship. And to Buber, this means that in an I-It relationship, you see it as an object maybe to be used or has a, has a lower level of dimensionality because it's, it's not as complex. Where an I-Dao is higher level of dimensionality. There's more complex, there's a person behind that object with an interiorized self that you can kind of bridge over and connect to through language and experience, right? So the idea, in his opinion, enlightenment or the most perfect state of being where, I guess, you know, where people say you're never too sad <laughs> is this I Dao relationship with the whole world. And so uh, you get to a point where everything is like a person you're talking to and then you kind of bleed, your, your identity bleeds over into that person because you're sharing this, you know, instead of like an inanimate object. But you have this with everything, even, even inanimate objects. So, you know, that's just another thinker that has this idea of this, you know, uh, resonates with this idea that I'm talking about of lost consciousness and the perception of self and others arbitrary, including Alan Watts as well. So, uh, you know, Let's see, where are we at? We're like 16, almost 17 minutes in. So let me start wrapping this up here. <laughs> so basically the upshot of all this is that the feeling of being trapped in the bag of skin is, uh, is arbitrary and that it's not the true consciousness. In that true consciousness, right, true awareness is boundless and is not confined to one spot or another. And this has been shown experimentally in, uh, through with psycho psychological experimental scientific studies where they've proven that the bounds of cognition or thought are not limited to the brain or even the body, but leak out into the world. And you know, there's a paper on it. If anyone is interested, I'm not going to post it now, but if anyone wants to, I'll post it in the description or in the comment section of this video. Um, like I said, I'll do it only on request because I feel like it's overly technical and putting it without any request would be, wouldn't seem too productive as it's a, probably impenetrable to pick up, especially if you don't have a familiarity with, you know, a research method and design and all that jazz. But uh, the, the last thing I want to mention here, and it's kind of like a positive part of this, is that these psychedelic chemicals... And to mention, today is April, or at least I'm recording this on April 19th, 2015, which is Bicycle Day, the first day that a person, uh, Albert Hoffman, uh, actually in intentionally took LSD. And that, I'm not going to explain that story. That, that, that probably will require its own video, and it's been explained pretty well by most a lot, a lot of people. So um, what I am going to say, though, is that when it comes to the lost consciousness and the perception of self and others is arbitrary, these kinds of chemicals like LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, uh, dimethyltryptamine, that these chemicals can uh, decalcify the ego. They can make it so that we are allowed these experiences where we feel outside of our normal uh, boundary, uh, our normal boundaries, and we can experience this, and it can kind of counterbalance the feeling of always being in a bag of skin. So I'm not to say that we're going, we should obliterate the feeling of being in a bag of skin. All I'm saying is that from time to time, you want to change the dial from traffic and weather to something more enjoyable. Because, I mean, do you always listen to the news of traffic and weather? No, you put on something, you only do that when that's relevant. And then when you get home and everything's finished and done, you, you put on a different channel, right? You put on something more entertaining or something more edifying than just traffic and weather. So these chemicals can allow for people to counterbalance this this feeling and, and and it can allow the ego from becoming too stable and 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 and, and neurotic because that's the, the whole thing of not taking things as seriously that's what happens when you take your ego too stably now i'm not going to also say that this is the only way to experience uh, a feeling of being outside of your normal bag of skin 
uh, but it is one of the most reliable. Um, just like with any uh, drug, it's reliable. It's, uh, the drug's actions on behavior are very uh, they're consistent. You can, you can get it today or tomorrow. It doesn't matter what time of the week it is, right? Um, but there are other methods like maybe meditation or c contemplating art or walking through nature. But these may not be as reliable and maybe, um, uh, you know, because they can be confounded by certain things like your mood and whatnot. Um, which is the true about uh, substances like LSD as well. But like I said, it's not as reliable and... You almost the probability of having these experiences are just higher on these chemicals, especially if someone coming from a background where they're not trained to look at nature in that kind of way. Maybe they see it as a nuisance instead of a, a beautiful thing. But <clears throat> so yes, uh, I want to kind of just end it there. Uh, again, happy bicycle day, everyone. You know, uh, just be observant of you know brave Albert Hoffman who. I think 50, no, I'm sorry, let's see, 70, 72 years ago today, took what he thought was a threshold dose, which in fact was over 10 times a threshold dose of LSD, and changed the world forever, changed the world for absolute ever, so, alright, I just want to end with that, thank you for listening, and, uh, have a good one.